Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back to Dream Zones. On the last episode, I have do a review of the Sonic Warrior Mechanic Alliance SX02, aka the Sounds Way from the Bumblebee movie. If you miss it, you can check it out later. As I mentioned in almost all the Transformer figure reviews, I will try to get the most of it. In this episode, we're gonna do a repaint and some modification on this figure. If you are new in Dream Zone, just make sure you subscribe to this channel and don't forget to ring the bell so you won't miss the coming soon video. This will do a big help for my channels. I will keep continuing to create more contents in the future. And please follow my Instagram too. You will see some new activity about Dream Zone and also I will share some news about arriving new toys. Alright, without further ado, let's check it out what I will do on this figure. The first is the LED light on the eye plate. As we know, this figure actually had one LED light right in the middle. I want to make it just look like what we see in the movie. The light actually appeared on the both sides, instead it bright right in the middle. And next, I'm gonna cut out some pieces under the neck joint to make it more room in order to enhance the low taste and tilting up and down. And after that, I will repaint the whole head scalp based on the slideshow sounds wave version. To enhance the detail molded inside the chest part, I will also repaint the whole plastic pieces inside. At the front, sure, we're gonna add the Decepticon logo. And this is the decals logo that I printed earlier on the previous project. All I need is just find the right side and put it on. If you want to know how it made, you can check out my previous video, the custom repaint Blitzwing. Just like my other modifications, I will definitely cover the screw. I will gonna reuse this unwanted model kit part and lucky enough, the dimension will definitely fit on the screw holes. And about the tank mode screw holes, and after you transfer to tank mode, the screw, I will cover it using the same model kit part left over from Blitzwing project, the 144 scale tank model kit part. Although I love the hand so much, but I still need to repaint it. When I look at the image, they should be in blue color. This is the color I gonna use, the TS89 Tamiya Per Blue. This is really close to the body color, and in fact, they do have some metallic looks. I believe they would look good on it. And I will also use this to repaint these two panels. To add more detail, I prepared this plastic strip to add on these missing detail sections, which are also are great compared with the original design. On the main body, I simply will do a dirty wash and enhance all the molded detail and also highlight it with a silver to make it look like the full figure are metal built. On this shoulder cannons, I will do a dirty wash and also we can see the two red stripes are missing that I gonna repaint it. And about the blaster, I will simply coat it with metallic dark silver and do some silver highlight, try to bring out all detail. And about the weapon, the Ravage is must not be left behind. This figure painted originally is quite good but still not that in point. I want it after the repaint look like a premium style figures. I'm sure there's a lot to do. Alright, let us begin. At first, we need to remove the hand. Simply unscrew it and you can easily get the hand removed it. There is a reason why these figures are so cheap. As you can see, the, all the motor lines still left on the finger that we need to clear it out before the repaint begins. I'm using the lighter to clear out all the motor line, but you need to be careful don't get too close or you need to give it a hit in order to get the motor line to melt down a bit. Just like doing a model kit, ascending is the must. And I'm using a cutter to remove all the excess and motor mark. After the process, you will definitely see the difference. It depends how clean you like, it's really personal. For me, this is good to go. All set ready, and next we're going to paint. I directly use the couple layer of the pearl blue, and I think the result is quite okay. And next what I'm doing is, I add some dark silver metallic touch up, which is mixed from silver and black color, apply on all the joint and the detail motor part. It will look even better. As I mentioned, now they all look good. Even they are not so close with the original molding design, but I'm still happy with the result. And next, we're gonna work on the front skirt panel. But to remove this is very tricky. Just make sure you don't put it too hard and break it. So what I do is, I use a plier to slot it in this section, simply lift it up and it pop up nice and safely. 
And again, this section also have quite a lot molting line that we need to clean up. After all the cleaning job, I'm masking it before the painting. Not only the front sections, also the back section as well. Because the ball joint already so tight, it can't afford any paint to make it thicker and more tighter. So we have to cover it, make sure the ball joint are not over paint. And then I follow the panel line, using the cutter carefully cut away and remove the masking tape with where I need to paint. We need to make sure the masking tape is nice and tight to get what we need. I usually use a cotton bar, cut the edge to the sharp angle and use it to push it against the panel line. Easy to use and is soft and secure. And next, I will apply the same paint on only the front side. Just like the handset, I spray only a couple layer and it dries very fast. And now we can remove the masking tape and check out the result. I really like this Tamiya Pearl Blue. And it caused me to come up some idea. When I need to repaint my Optimus Prime figures, this blue will work perfectly on him. Alright, next, we're gonna work on the modification of the head sculpt. All you need to do is tilt up the head like so, and then continue all the way in the same directions, and the head will pop out. The head sculpt design is really great. We didn't see any screw or whatsoever, but to disassemble it, it's quite simple. We start from the mask area, just make sure you pull it out all the way, and you can see, now we can separate it part by part. We need to remove the back side first, and then we can start it to split away all panels. Just that simple. And now we have the whole head separated. In this section, I will need to remove as well, just for the painting purpose. Especially on this small part, they're supposed to be gunmetal silver, which I got the reference from the slide soul figure head sculpt. Now we have the neck joint in the sections. The original design looked like this pig supposed can be moved forward and back. The problem is there is no room for it. I'm not so sure why they designed this way. My concept is cut away some pieces to allow it to move. First, I need to remove the joint. And this is the section we need to cut away. I simply use the cutting plier to cut out the piece like so, to create a movable sections. After that, I clean up using a sharp cutter. Then we can try fit it. It's all looking good. Now it can move forward and backward. That's what we need. When it works, we need to do the other side as well in the same process. After that, we can simply assemble it and check out the result. After the modifications, the range of moving forward and backwards definitely increase. And next, just need to fit on the body, see how it works. Just by that, we already can see the head motion definitely increase. I believe the head scout now can tilting up quite a big range. And in fact, now the head can rock forward and backward. In order to get more accurate, on the side of the face mask, supposed to be white color. So I need to mask it and repaint it simply with the white spray. On this dark metal color section, I really like the painting. I will do a masking in order to keep it. Now we have both sides ready to paint. What I did is, I used a simple matte white spray paint that I found in the local hardware shop and I'm quite happy with the result. To make it more realistic, I start with my usual step, the dirty wash. On the face mask area, I simply mix with dark brown and black color but add more water so it won't come too heavy. And then on the armor side, for example, all the blue part, same with the black and dark brown, but I use less water so the dirty walls appear more stronger. After for a while, I used a wet towel, but remember, you don't need to be too wet. Simply clean up the surface, leave the panel line with the dark wash. So it will look nice and natural. I also use the cotton bar to clean up the small part as well.
after simply clean up, this is what we're looking for and we do the same on the face mask area. And the result is really really good as you can see. Follow with the reference, I mix with black color and silver color to create gunmetal colors to add on all small details. In order to get more accurate of eye brightening effect, it's rather simple. And here I show you the tricks. The eye plate section is actually molded kind of white transparent color. So what we need to do, we need to cover the center part simply using the electric black tape. First, I cut to a triangle like so and stick it on the top side right at the middles. And now we can track the result. It actually is not bad, but I still think the eye is a bit too big. I want to make the effect look like he squeezes his eyes. So I add another triangle right below in the center. And now the result is more like it. I think it's alright. I can move forward to reassemble the whole head again. Now the head looks amazing. But again, we can do it better. All I need to do is add the silver on all the edge parts to make the whole head look like metal bales in order to make it look more realistic. Alright, after all the silver tapping, it looks amazing. From here, we know how to deal with the body part. Let's move on. The yellow paint job inside the chest, it just looks like a nipple. I really don't like it. And luckily, these whole pieces are really easy to remove. I simply use a screwdriver, remove it this way. It's made from high density plastic, and now you can get the whole pieces removed. They actually combine with two sections the motor detail sections and the front clear color sections. In order to review most of the detail under the transparent plastic, I will simply spray a dark metallic color as the base and also a light layer of sparkling silver on top. And finishing with a very light mix of black color, tap it in and let it dry naturally and bring up all detail. After it dry, we can simply wash over the top and flat area to make the detail look more pops. Although just a small paint upgrade, but it definitely improved and now it looks just stunning. About these dark transparent sections, it seems not much need to do. I will use the self-printed decals paper again. The difference is, this decals paper is actually white base, so you need to carefully trim it as close as possible to the printed artwork. If not, you might see it will leave too much white space. Yes, of course, you can trim it later, like what I did. But there is a risk, as you can see. Make sure you carefully control the weight of the cutter, not over cut it. If not, you will leave the cutting mark on the transparent plastic. At the first, I do think about to use the transparent printed decals paper for these Decepticon logos. But unfortunately, you won't see the detail just like the slideshow versions. That's why I decided to use this one. Before start to repaint the body, I will use this model kit's leftover, simply cut a thin slide to cover and hide the screw. And surprisingly, it covered really well. I don't even need to apply any glue on it. To make it perfect, just simply sand it a little bit. Make sure it stays nice and flat. After the sanding, you realize that actually no one knows there is a screw hole underneath. It's all look good. I will do the same on the other side as well. To recreate the missing detail on these sections, I simply use the plastic stripe to cut two rectangles. And then with the super glue applied to these sections. Because these figures are not based on the original 3D mode, that's why on this section, we just need to imagine the spacing on this part and try to get as close as possible with the original design. And here we got the body ready to repaint. The first, we're gonna start with the lower arm section. Inside this section should be red color instead of white. So I use the two types of red color to mix the red that match with the original painting. And 
here we go, the result is really good. Next, we move on for the white part. On this white section, actually, I want to do something different. As we see from the reference, we know that it should be a plain white color and simply weathering. Maybe enhance all the molded lines. But for me, I think I want to do it slightly different. When you look at any image in the CGI, there is a different level on the white part. The painting is actually give you a visual of the metal being weathering. This is the type of repaint that I'm looking forward to do on this figure. Based on the reference image, the section behind the knees should be white color. I simply use a simple layer of the white model color to cover these sections. Although it's not even, but actually that is the effect I'm looking for. And then I use the white and black color to create a gray color and simply tap on all the white sections. I don't paint it because I want the effect that automatically generated by the color is on to create a natural weathering effect. Alright, here we go. Here we have the basic base color ready. All we need to do is waiting for it dry completely. And I also did the same on these small panels. And at the same time, I did a touch up on all the white part. Because this is a cheap figure, the edge of the color is kind of fading. To do this, we'll make it look more solid. To do the dirty wash, as usual, I will mix with black and dark brown. And this mix will look a lot more natural instead of using just only black color. The process is just similar with all other dirty wash that I did. Make sure the color is covered all the panel lines and all the gaps. Alright, so far I have all blue part been covered with the dirty wash and just leave it a couple minutes and it will dry completely and we can start cleaning up. To clean up this big area is very simple. I just use an unwanted towel and soak it with some water but make sure they are not too wet. Simply rub it away all the assets. I always use this model color. It's really simple to wash it away and the result looks really natural. And the best part is that it's really easy to control. If you think the final result is too heavy, you can always come back to clean up more. Alright, so far, the wash is done on this section. I think that's good enough. As we see, after the wash, it looks so natural. All the dust, the oily stain will stay on the gap and also inside the motor line. And now we can follow up to clean up other part as well. Alright, so far the wash is done. One thing I really like this model color is because they are matte finish. After the cleaning, the color will stay. It looks really natural just like a dust or leftover oil stain. To soften the chipping effect contrast, I just use a very thin mix of white color to cover the whole section. Mm -hmm. 
After applied it, the white coat on top, it looked exactly the direction that I need. The thin white coat has softened the chipping color effect. The whole white color panels has been weathering, just like a CGI. Compared with all the blue part, the white part is just too smooth. If I simply wash it, they will end up like scratching all the natural base color. So what I need to do is, on top of it, I will need to spray a matte coat as protections so I can process to the next layer paint job. While I'm waiting for the matte coat dry, I use a black and silver mix to create a dark metal color to cover some missing paint sections and touch up all other parts as well. In order to bring out all detail, I did some silver dry brushes on all unpainted grey colour sections. And next, I used the silver colour and tapping and painted all the edges to create some weathering scratched mark. After this process, the figure actually come to life. With a simple touch-up, the whole body really looks like a metal build. By looking at the reference, there is a brownie stain on these sections. In order to create that, I used a dark brown and little bit black mix to create a very thin layer of dark wash. Paint over, simply let the brown color soaking in all the panel lines. Again, after it dry, I just simply use a wet towel to wash away all the assets. After the brown wash, now the color presents with some brownish. It looks like what we exactly want. To make it look more dynamic, I use a black color and brown color mix. Simply paint on all the panel line sections. Right after it dry, I use the wet towel to clean up all excess. The result is looking good. And next, what we need to do is highlight all the edges to make it look more weatherly. I use a black color and dark brown mix again, but this time I apply on the paper clips. Because the corner on this arm section is not really sharp, it's really difficult to paint it or tap it with a paintbrush. And again, the paper clips is really easy to control. The more I use it, the more I found that really, really effective. But it's a shame. I just thought about this when I painted the arm. I should use this way to paint the body as well. I believe the sharp corner will look a lot more better. It's really worked that well. I used the silver color again to apply on the paper clips. Just did some scratching highlight for these sections. 
To complete it, I use the gold color to repaint some sections. Okay, after a simple touch up, I believe the body part repaint has done. And sure, how can we forget the iconic shoulder cannon? First, I mask it and use the red color spray paint to recreate the missing red stripe. As usual, we do the same, start with the dirty wash and wipe away all the excess and also apply the light silver highlight on all the edges. On these joy sections, I use the gunmetal spray paint and then finish with the silver dry brushes. I did the same for his rifle. I used the gunmetal spray paint as a base, finishing with the weathering effect and also highlight all the edges with the silver paint. Alright, when come to the weapons, how can we forget the iconic best made of Southway, the Ravage? This figure originally already did a quite good job on painting But compared to the reference I got, I know there is some detail are missing That's what I gonna add on it Although that's not painted, but the detail actually molded on the figure So that's really easy for me to work on that After all the repaint and dry brush, it seems almost done. I'm really happy to how it looks now. But without the Decepticon logos, it's not complete. And again, I will need my cell printed stick house paper to complete the job. Yes, there is some challenge because the logo is really small. It's quite difficult to get it on place. My printer is not the high res. So if you got a high res printer or maybe laser print, I believe the result is definitely better. Last but not least, I add the gold color to give it a shine before completion. Quick, simple and easy, the Soundsway Ravage repaints are complete. Alright, and now we have all the part repainted and ready to assemble and check out the final review. Ladies and gentlemen, here we have the Sonic Warrior Mechanic Alliance, aka the Soundsway Custom Repaint Complete.
Alright, let's get a closer look what the difference after the custom repaint and modifications. Now the head can have a better motions, even bigger range that can tilt up and down easily. And the eye is definitely looks better. And the chest detail now is more wishable. And I really like the result of the arm, especially on the weathering part that I use the paper clips to do a paint job. Although that's a new, but it's worth to try. And the result just fantastic. And about the lower portions, the ease the detail has been molded, simply a dirty wash and the wedding ring highlight with a silver touch up, the result is just great. I personally really like this figure, especially the molded back detail. A simply touch up is definitely make a big difference. When talk about Ravage, I have full of joy to repaint this figure compared to the Soundway itself. Although this figure is really small, but the molding detail is just amazing. I just don't want to stop, I really want to get more of it. And last but not least, on the tank mode, I also do some modification. I just repaint some section with the gold color marker pens. About the screw, I use the same concept with what I did with the blitz wing as well. Paint it in gunmetal silver and add the manek and flatten the screw and just simply stick on it. Although it's a simple fix, but it's very effective. If you guys want to know how to do it, you can also check it out my custom repaint blitz wing videos. And about the tank mode, it's actually not much to do because most of the paint job is already on the main figure. After it transformed to be a tank mode, it actually reveals most of the part of Southway body itself. Alright, let's do a quick comparison with my previous repaint project, ZB02 aka Blitzwing. As I mentioned it, when I get the figure, I will get the most of it, especially on this Sonic Warrior. Although this is a cheap range figure, but the molding detail are good, so I'm able to make it compatible with the high range design figure, and I'm so glad I actually did it. Thank you for staying until now and go through the journey with me. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and share it to your friend, and don't be hesitate to subscribe and ring the bell so you won't miss the coming soon video. I'll see you soon.